All right, guys, and welcome back. Right, it's 6 a.m. on a Sunday morning, bank holiday weekend. I've got this Audi S4, which needs a dual mass flywheel, so I'm taking it into work so I can do it. This is the reason why it needs one. Put it in first gear. Car's always shaking, you can probably hear that now. Better the clutch up. See what I mean? It's very, very juddery. Clutch is juddering. Whole car judders. I've checked the transmission. Doesn't seem to be that. Dry shafts all seem fine. So we're pretty convinced it's a flywheel. So let's get it to work and show you guys exactly how to do it. So I don't normally do these step-by-step -step guides, but I figured because I couldn't find one for this particular generation of Audi S4, I thought I'd help everyone on the internet out by doing it myself. So if you want to say thanks to me, just smash that subscribe button and like the video. So first things first, I disconnect the battery, then I raise the car in the air and start removing the exhaust. Now this is a Miltec system, so it may differ slightly from yours. But I basically remove all the clamps, start off the hangers using a pry bar, and then remove the full system in one go. The next job is to remove the centre prop bearing and the heat shield that goes around it. This is held on with a couple of bolts and a couple of plastic clips. And then loosen off the M8 prop bolts with a ratchet and then remove them completely with an impact gun just to speed things up. The front prop shaft shield is then removed. This is held on with a couple of Torx bolts. And then the front prop bolts are again loosened by hand and then removed with the impact gun. The UJs do need a bit of a tap with a hammer and chisel to release them. But once free, the prop's easy to remove. And I place it out of the way. I then remove the front cap brackets. Again, not sure if these are original or not. They're held on with M10 bolts mounted to both sides of the gearbox. Once off, they're loosening the downpipes. Again, I think this is part of the Miltec system and isn't standard, so yours may differ slightly. The downpipes are then pulled away and then cable tied to the bottom arms. This just saves me removing the lamber sensors. Now both downpipes off, I unbolt the left hand cat just to give me better access. It's a bit of a nightmare if I'm honest, you need lots of extensions and a UJ. It's held on with three M8 nuts and it seals on like a tapered um, exhaust seat. So the fortunate thing is it doesn't need a gasket. This was taken off completely as I had a hairline crack which needed welding, but you could just push it to one side. I then unbolt the front drive shaft. Space is a bit tight, so I do these by hand. The drive shaft shields are then unbolted. These are held on with three M8 bolts either side. Space is really tight, so I recommend using a little quarter drive ratchet and a hexagon 6mm socket. It took forever and it was really tight and awkward, but I did get there in the end. The shield will then just wiggle out. Again, space is really tight, but it will come out. Just take your time. The gearbox is then supported with a stand and the cross member can be unbolted along with the mount. I then started removing the bell housing bolts. Now the bottom three were an absolute nightmare as some frames in the way. So I recommend jacking the gearbox right up to try and get a little bit more access. The crank sensors on the left hand side of the engine, bolted to the gearbox. This needs unbolting and pulling out as it will foul the flywheel. The gear linkage rods also need unbolting. Space is tight, so I couldn't film it very well, but you'll work it out. There's a couple of rods, a couple of M8 bolts holding it together. The slave cylinder is an external tire bolted to the left side of the gearbox. It's held on with one M8 bolt. I just removed this from the gearbox to save bleeding it, but I did later find that it would have been easy just to take pipe out because it's really difficult to get back in once the clutch is in. All the bell housing bolts are out now, so it's ready to come out. My friend gives me a hand pulling the box out and we safely lower it to the ground out of the way. I quickly removed the clutch and as you can see the flywheel is absolutely knackered. Centre bearings just blown to bits, the whole thing's absolutely destroyed. So yeah, I think it's definitely the fault. I bolt the new flywheel using new bolts and torque them up to the correct torque spec. I then fit the clutch to the flywheel and the new release bearing to the gearbox. The fork is held on with one Torx 45 bolt and the bearing just clips onto that. <laughs> and at this exact moment, everything goes wrong for me you can spot the problem comment below so bolt everything up in reverse order everything goes super smoothly until it comes to taking the vehicle off the lift now press the clutch and the first three quarters of the pedal is really soft and the last bit's fairly hard but instantly i thought this isn't right we we'll try re-bleeding it doing lots of bits and bobs like that but to no avail nothing helps um, if you start the vehicle up you can't get it in gear if you pull it in gear and then start it up, it will slightly push forward. Not fully. It's not like the clutch is all the way up, but it's just not right. So we spend a few hours messing around with the car, trying to get the clutch to work. We speak to Aldi. 
we make a few phone calls, do lots of bits, and in the end, we come to the conclusion that the brand new clutch we fitted wasn't all the way back. So these clutches have basically got a self-adjustment function. So when you press the pedal, they essentially jack themselves out. Obviously, if the friction plate is behind the pressure plate, it's not a problem. However, for example, in transportation, the LUK has got no kind of locking mechanism to hold the pressure plate in place. So I think from looking back at pictures, etc., of the clutch, I think it's not quite all the way back. I think it probably was. Maybe in transportation, it's maybe been knocked and it's just moved slightly. So what you're meant to do with these LUK clutches, I've since found out, is you buy a special tool which presses the centre of the clutch and then you can wind it all the way back. And once it's all the way wound back, you can then release it and that's the perfect tension and it should wear accordingly and set itself up accordingly. So I have learned a valuable lesson here. I was kind of aware of these um, self-adjusting clutches, but because it looked okay, I just assumed it was okay. I did have access to the correct tool to do it. I should have put it on in the first place. Lesson learned. Don't make the same mistake as me, guys. Do it properly. Right, let's whip the gearbox back out and then sort this clutch issue. Right, so the box came back out again. I reset the clutch. I put it all back together and the pedal felt loads better. I thought, yeah, I think I've cracked it. It was a little bit hard at the bottom, so it wasn't 100% right, but loads better than before. Went to road test it. It engaged in gears lots better, but it was still slipping. And then once the flywheel clutch setup got hot, it was then just terrible to get in gear. So there was something wrong with it. I brought it back. I wasn't happy. I was fed up and I just locked it up and left it for a week. So it's been another week and this car has been on my mind a lot. So I've pulled the gearbox back out again, whipped the clutch off, and this time I have actually found a fault. So I compared the pressure plate with the old unit. And when they're fully compressed, the new pressure plate is actually slightly thicker than the old one. Now this is my problem. So what I've done, I've taken the original pressure plate, I've put it on the press, I've stood the pressure plate on four nuts so I can ensure there's no pressure on the centre of the plate, and then I've pressed the centre down with the press, and then I've manually reset the clutch. So you press it all the way down, the adjuster will go loose, push it around with a screwdriver, and then you release the pressure, and that's it, that's the clutch reset. Now it's time to refit the clutch. I used the LUK clutch tool to fit this properly because I do not want any more issues. So first I put the supporter shaft straight through the centre of the friction plate, and then I put the pressure plate on top, and you hold it on with three adapter threads, and then I put the three finger press on top of that, clamp it down slowly until the pressure plate is just touching the flywheel, put the three M8 bolts in holding the pressure plate on, I take all the LUK stuff off and then put the remaining three bolts in and that's the clutch fitted properly so we know that's going to work properly now. Right now I just need to put it all back together in reverse order, prop, drive shafts, leave the clutch, all that jazz and then we can test it. Right guys it's back together, it's working, it's taken a few weeks, we've had the gearbox in and out a few times trying to work out exactly what's up with it and in the end we found out the pressure plate was slightly too thick, it was, it was the wrong one. Um, there's a choice of two apparently and I had the wrong one so I've actually put the second hand pressure plate back in because it was actually in really good condition I've only changed the flywheel because the flywheel's knackered the clutch was fine so I put second hand pressure plate new friction plate and new release bearing so most of it's new um, and it, like I say it feels superb really happy and the car's purring again once again so yeah bit frustrating but we did get there so hit the subscribe button hit the like button and stay tuned for more see you later bye bye